know, we know you're only here because you're killing time between now and the blessed day when Cyberpunk 2077 finally launches. Frankly, we're only making videos because it gives us a break from checking the calendar. It's not long though before we'll each be immersed in the world of Night City, with Keanu Reeves living rent-free in our cyber brains as the digitally resurrected rocker boy Johnny Silverhand. Do whatever it takes to stop him, defeat him, gut him. Until then, with Keanu Reeves just living rent-free in our regular organic brains, as per usual, we've turned to the stopgap solution of just playing whatever else we can find with him in it. But finding a game with Keanu in isn't as easy as you might think. Take the official Johnny Mnemonic FMV game from 1995, which replaced everyone's favourite sensitive tough guy with some dude who had been in one episode of Melrose Place. No, you listen. I'm a dead man if I don't get this out of my head. I haven't been this disappointed since Speed 2 Cruise Control. Anyway, for better results, we recommend the following games, which contain various quantities of actual Keanu Reeves to tide you over until Cyberpunk arrives. If you're the kind of Keanu hipster who really enjoys his early work before he went all mainstream, then may we recommend the video game adaptation of his breakthrough movie, Bill & Ted's Excellent Adventure, titled, wait for it, Bill & Ted's Excellent Video Game Adventure. The game follows on from the movie, with Bill and, more importantly, Keanu Reeves' Ted being asked by Rufus to head back in time to rescue various historical figures who have been kidnapped by Time Rebels and placed into the wrong periods in history. What follows is our 8-bit Keanu having to wander around history, talking to people, getting attacked by other people, and picking up items with which to lure the historical figures, because I'm sure you don't need me to tell you that Julius Caesar won't go back to Roman times unless you give him some salad dressing. But you do get to enjoy some of that classic Ted Theodore Logan dialogue, as interpreted by a 90s video game designer who may or may not have seen the actual film, and who has a hard deadline to hit or he's fired. Between levels you get to enjoy the musical stylings of Wild Stallions, who probably could have used all that time we just spent rescuing Rembrandt to practice their instruments, judging by how they're sounding. Yeah, good luck building a society around that, the future. I don't know if you're ready to see what I want to show you. But unfortunately, you and I have run out of time. In this house, we recognize The Matrix as the science fiction fable that taught a generation to free their minds, to question reality, and that the inside of computers is green. The Matrix also furnished us with Keanu's most iconic sci-fi role to date in the shape of messianic hacker Neo. I know Kung Fu. Show me. The 2005 Matrix tie-in game named The Matrix Path of Neo let you follow in his footsteps and relive key scenes from the movie trilogy. Trinity! In this way, the game played out like a mega mix of your favourite Matrix action scenes, but with additional material that you won't believe didn't make it into the cinematic release. Like when Neo goes to another dimension to battle giant bipedal ant monsters. Get this bastard off my ass. I'll make it up to you. Oh, by the way, they hate fire. The neat thing about gamifying a concept like The Matrix is how the actual Matrix is already a big game-like simulation that you live in so robots can steal your body heat is what I think I remember was happening. If you're talking about what you can feel, what you can smell, what you can taste and see, then real is simply electrical signals interpreted by your brain. Therefore, The Matrix Path of Neo could lean hard into the gaminess of it all, presenting huge chunks of tutorial in the first act as Neo's in-universe training to become a virtual freedom fighter. Works like a video game tutorial. 
You do still claim to be the ultimate gamer, right? I do still claim that. How does it know? It's hard to imagine a science fiction hero as aspirationally quotable as The Matrix's Neo, but we'll be watching closely to see if Johnny Silverhand can deliver us a line as memorable as Neo's best. I've got the high score for Ninja Crisis. We can only hope. Wake the f*** up, samurai. We have a city to burn. Eh, it's no I've got the high score for Ninja Crisis. I have to cross over now, Constantine. You've only got one shot at this. You know how much I hate going there. Means to an end, John. Means to an end. I'm still missing some pieces for this. Look, you don't have much time. So I've been told. Constantine was a 2005 movie based on the DC Vertigo comic series Hellblazer, but renamed. Presumably because a Hellblazer sounds like what you'd wear on your first day at Hell boarding school. In the PlayStation 2 tie-in game, from an era when tie-in games for B-tier blockbusters still existed, you play as lead character John Constantine, with Keanu's face but what is clearly someone entirely different's voice. Damn you, Constantine. I've been damned by worse. Much worse. If you're not familiar with the character, John Constantine is a sort of chain-smoking action exorcist. is his seven years of bad luck will have expired around 2012? Ooh, that would explain the great critical reception for Keanu's 2013 directorial debut, Man of Tai Chi. The objective of the game is to run around, often in hell, shooting demons with a variety of unique weapons. Weapons with evocative, mythological and religious names like Witch's Curse, The Crucifier, and a golden firearm constructed from ancient religious artifacts that's called uh, the Holy Shotgun? I'm really getting tired of this crap. Really? That's the best name they could come up with? We'd suggest they call it the Holy <laughs> Gun, but it's actually also quite disappointing. Mostly though, Constantine the game seems to be about a character who apparently has terminal lung cancer, cracking inappropriate jokes about how great and cool smoking is. Tonight, smoking's got competition. Weird thing to say when you're literally dying from it. Eventually you catch up with the final boss, who is Lucifer's son Mammon, in a hospital hydrotherapy pool, and perform a QTE, which in this case stands for Quick Time Exorcism. Somehow, still not the worst thing I've ever seen in a public swimming pool. Ugh. Once again, John, you've left me speechless. The year was 2019. Fortnite Battle Royale had been going strong for two years, but numbers were starting to dip, players were moving on to other Battle Royale games, and dancers were suing Epic Games in their probably millions for stealing their sweet copyrightable moves. Fortnite needed a shot in the arm, and who better to administer that shot than Keanu Charles Reeves? And given the nature of the game, there was only one Keanu character that could do Fortnite justice. That's right, Alex Wyler from The Lake House. Wait, no, I'm hearing it was John Wick. Yeah, that, that makes more sense. As part of the John Wick x Fortnite event for the release of John Wick 3, Fortnite added a John Wick outfit which let players look like Keanu in-game, as well as an umbrella skin for their gliders, a black wrap, a new mode called Wick's Bounty, and a gold token back bling. Most importantly though, it lets you see what Keanu Reeves would look like flossing. And who can put a price on that? The big draw was the Keanu skin, however, which was ironic because Fortnite already had a skin, known as the Reaper, which was a very obvious unlicensed homage to John Wick. According to Keanu, people kept asking him about it until he decided to make things official with the official John Wick skin, and an announcement trailer in which Wick confronted Reaper in a dark alley, and I guess shot him in the face. 
If all you have to do is ask, can everyone just start asking Keanu Reeves when he's going to appear in an outside Xbox video? Thanks in advance. Bram Stoker's Dracula on the Sega CD cast you as Jonathan Harker, a Victorian solicitor tasked with acting as an estate agent for Count Dracula, and played in the movie of the same name by Keanu Reeves. Essentially, we're supposed to believe that buried somewhere in that collection of three or four pixels is Keanu's dreamy visage. As for how well the game sticks to the events of Stoker's story, well, we're sure the role of estate agent has changed somewhat since 1897, but we're not convinced the job has ever revolved around punching bats out of the sky and hoofing tarantulas across the room. Not unless you're trying to sell on a particularly grim bit of student accommodation. In what must be one of the few movie tie-in video games that actually has a running time shorter than the movie it's based on, within an hour you'll have boxer-sized your way to the Dark Count of Transylvania himself, an all-powerful vampire lord whose only weakness is also being repeatedly punched and kicked by a handsome solicitor. Endure one of the deeply tedious levels in this game and your potential reward is that via the futuristic power of compact disc technology you'll be treated to some marginally less pixelated snippets of the film featuring, yes, I think that's him, Keanu Reeves everyone! Still, spare a thought for the people who are trying to get their Keanu kicks from the Game Boy version of the game. Maybe squint a bit, until your eyes are closed, then just imagine Keanu's face instead. There you go. Yellow. Heard your trident today. John? Yeah. How'd you get this number? I'll explain later, when you're not so busy. As you'll know if you've seen the John Wick movies, Keanu character John Wick is a retired professional killer. That's why it's curious to see him switch careers from hitman to bank robber in Heist Simulator Payday 2, in which he turns up as one of the downloadable playable heisters. Still, I suppose there are plenty of transferable skills. And although John Wick does fit nicely into the world of Payday 2, someone might want to politely let him know that it doesn't matter how expensive your sunglasses are, they don't count as a mask when you're trying to conceal your identity while robbing a bank. It's go time. Still very obviously you, John. Developer Starbreeze even added two new John Wick-based heists for maximum wickness, including one where you have to rescue Caron, the concierge of the Continental Hotel. If the finale of John Wick 3 Parabellum is anything to go by, Movieverse Caron can probably do his own rescuing. Thank you very much. Not so in Payday 2. I'm glad you showed up. As you can see, I need some help here. Still, playing as John Wick should give you a brief taste of what it's going to be like having Johnny Silverhand along for the ride in Cyberpunk 2077. Only here he's got human arms instead of a robot one, and isn't actually voiced by Keanu, but you get the idea. Like clockwork, just as planned. Power respects power. To earn a place by my side, they need to demonstrate power. John Wick. Killing you demonstrates power. Fortnite and Payday are all well and good, but if you really want to get inside the mind of Keanu's coutured contract killer, the best way to do it is with John Wick Hex, the ultra-violent strategy game from Thomas Was Alone creator Mike Bithell. You have a higher purpose, and that purpose requires certain theatrics. I always did enjoy a little theatre. You might think that the only strategy John Wick employs is in deciding which ornate throwing knife to fling effortlessly across the room into the face of a charging attacker, but if John Wick Hex is to be believed, a ton of meticulous planning is actually taking place up in Keanu's noggin. 
As in games like Super Hot, in John Wick Hex, time only moves when you do. As Keanu, you have to decide the order of your actions with the aim of moving to the level exit as quickly as possible, dispatching your enemies stylishly, and trying to avoid getting shot if you can. I mean, you wouldn't want to spoil that suit. In this way, the game forces you to think like John Wick in that you have to take stock of a situation and decide whether you've got enough time to shoot two guys and get back into cover before another guy gets a chance to fire a shot at you, national treasure Keanu Reeves. The absolute nerve. It's satisfying in a way that would be worrying if we weren't pretty sure John Wick is a good guy. Like, 80% sure. 75 maybe. 60 lowest. It's a testament to just how cool Keanu Reeves is that a game which essentially boils down to a time management sim can be so very stylish, but the real John Wickiness comes in once you finish a level and get to watch a replay, where a precise series of planned movements that took you close to 20 real-world minutes plays out in a glorious balletic display of calculated violence that takes about 10 seconds. Looks a lot better without that 5 minute pause where I went to make a sandwich, that's for sure. Those were seven Keanu Reeves games to play until Cyberpunk 2077 is here. Thanks for watching, folks, and good luck to us all in these last few days until Cyberpunk is finally with us. We hope you have a great time between now and then playing these alternative Keanu games. Or if you're watching this video in the shining future when Cyberpunk is actually out, then lucky you. How is it? How come you're not playing it right now? Let us know, friends from the future. And also, please, go ahead and treat yourselves to this other Outside Xbox video on screen now about the heroes who lived long enough to become the villain of their own stories. Thanks again, and we'll see you next time on Outside Xbox.